Salam students, let's begin with the class 8 history. Today we are going to begin with chapter number 5 that is when people rebel 1857 and after. Children, you all remember we have already learned in our second chapter like how the East India Company was transformed from a trading company to a territorial colonial power, right? This is what you have seen. Then because of like by 1857, we could say that the company came to exercise direct rule over about 63% of the territory and 78% of the population of our Indian subcontinent, correct? Now, in this chapter, we are going to learn why when people rebel, what happened after the rebellion took place in the year 1857 and after that. Today, we are doing the first part of this chapter. Let's go through the content of the chapter. The main topics that we are going to learn in this chapter are policies and the people. Then the second topic will be covering through the eyes of the people. Then a mutiny becomes a popular rebellion. The company fights back aftermath. These are the main topics. Now under this also we have some subtopics. Let's begin with the very first topic, policies and the people. In this policies and the people, children will be learning, it is... We'll be learning the three subtopics under that and that how the Nawabs lose their power, the peasants and the sepoys, how they were affected and even the responses to reforms we'll be learning in the policies and the people. So let's begin with the first topic, policies and the people. See children, you all know very well like the, uh, the policies of the East India Company had different effects on different people, right? And we know about the many policies that East India Company tried to implement it in our country, right? When they were the rulers there, the policies of the East India Company and the effect they had on different people, in not only kings, queens, peasants, even tribals, landlords, soldiers, everybody was affected because of that policies in some other other way, in different ways. Now, let's move to the next topic here. Nawabs lose their power. See, people resisted policies and actions that harmed their interest or went against their sentiments and interests, right? Now, in this, Nawabs lose their power. The power and authority of Indian kings started deteriorating due to the policies of Britishers. I hope you all remember the policies very well, such as we were having doctrine of lapse, subsidiary alliance, claim to paramountcy, etc. Now in this, what happened actually, how Nawabs did after the mid 18th century, Nawabs lost their power, like that is, uh, they had gradually lost their authority and honor, residents had been stationed in many courts and even the freedom of the rulers was reduced. So their armed forces were disbanded, the revenues and territories were taken away stage by stage. Now here children in this image you can see uh, Rani Lakshmi Bai of Jhansi and as well as Nana Saheb adopted son of Peshwa Baji Rao II. What happened actually many ruling families tried to negotiate with the company to protect their interest because of the policies of that. Then Rani Lakshmi Bai of Jhansi wanted the company to recognize her adopted son as the heir to the kingdom after the death of her husband. But due to the policy of the doctrine of flaps, they were, she was not allowed to have the adopted son as the heir of the kingdom. Similarly, Nana Saheb, who was the adopted son of Peshwa Baji Rao II, pleaded that he should be given his father's pension after his father's death. But the company, being confident of its superiority and military powers, turned down their request. Because of the policy of the doctrine of lapse, these two ruling families, they tried to plead, but then it was not taken into consideration. Then finally, Awadh was one of the last territories to be annexed. In the year 1801, a subsidiary alliance was imposed on Awadh. And in the year 1857, it was taken over. See, actually, in the year 1850, it was taken over by Governor General Dalhousie. He declared that the territory was being misgoverned 
and British rule was needed to ensure the proper administration. This was the reason given by him. What was the reason? That a why the subsidiary uh, alliance was imposed on our and the year it was in the year 1857 it was taken over and the company fully took over control of the hour and what was the reason this territory was being misgoverned and the british rule was needed to ensure the proper administration then finally what the company even began to plan how to bring the mughal dynasty to an end what was the planning the name of the mughal king was removed from the coins minted by the company Actually, if you remember children, previously in the Mughal rulers, they used to print their names on the coins, right? But then this was also the name of the Mughal king was removed from the coins minted by the company. And in the year 1849, a governor general Dalhousie announced that after the death of Bahadur Shah Zafar, even the family of the king, which king that is a Bahadur Shah Zafar, his family would be shifted out of the Red Fort and given another place in Delhi to reside in. Then in the year 1856, Governor General Kenning decided that Bahadur Shah Zafar would be the last Mughal king and after his death, none of his descendants would be recognized as kings. This was given in the year by Governor General Kenning in the year 1856. Then what uh, they were recognized uh, that descendants of the Mughal king was, uh, could be, they would not be recognized as kings, but they would just be called princes. That's it. Now, not only the rulers and uh, nawabs, but even the peasants and the sepoys, they were very much affected with the policies of the company, right? This is what we have seen. Now, see how the peasants were affected here. The peasants, they were burdened with the heavy taxes, right? This is what we have seen. They have resented the high taxes and the rigid methods of revenue collection on them. So, in the villages, peasants and zamindars, they were supposed to pay the high taxes and also the rigid method of the revenue collection. That is a strict method of revenue collection for them. So, many of them, they were not able to pay back their loans to the money lenders, right? And then gradually they lost the lands they had tilled for generations. This is what we have seen how the peasants were affected because of these policies. Now, even the Indian sepoys in the employ of the company also had reasons for discontent. Even they were not happy. Why? They were unhappy about their pay, allowances and the condition of service. Then what was there actually like some of the new rules that were given by the company violated their religious, their means uh, who's uh, the Indian sepoys, their religious sen sensibilities as well as their beliefs. How did you know that in... Uh, uh, that in those cross the sea, they would lose their religion and caste. You know what the Indian sepoys they were doing? They thought, see, one day many people in the country believed that if they cross the sea, many Indian sepoys, they were believing like that, if they will cross the sea, they would lose their religion and caste. But now here one incident came in front of them like that only. In the year 1824, the sepoys were told to go to Burma by the sea route to fight for the company. So what happened? They refused to follow because they were in the belief once uh, any of the person, if they crossed the sea, they were having that belief in themselves like they would lose their religion and caste. So they don't want to be away from their religion and caste. That is the reason. So sepoys were told to go to Burma by the sea route to fight for the company. But they refused to do so. They refused to follow the order that was given by the East India Company. Though they agreed, they did not. They refused by the sea route. But then too they said, they agreed to go by the land route. But then what happened here? They were severely punished when they were against, when they refused this to the company's order. Then, and since the issue did not die there, but still after punishing also it continued. In the year 1856, the company passed a new law 
which stated that every new person who took up the employment in the company's army had to agree to serve overseas if required so this was the order that was given by the east india company in the year 1856 they, pa they passed a new law related to this in which they stated clearly if any person takes employment in the company's army has to follow has to agree to the rules and regulations and if they are required to go overseas they should go so sepoys also reacted to what was happening in the countryside many of them were peasants and had families living in the villages so the anger of the peasants quickly spread among the sepoys now let's move to the next topic that is responses to reforms see the british they believed that the indian society had to be reformed this is what their belief okay so what they do the laws were passed to stop the practice of sati and they were encouraging the remarriage of widows then even english language was uh, that education the education of english language was actively promoted they were supporting it the most that each and every indian should also learn the english language so after 1830 the company allowed christian missionaries to function freely in its domain and even own land and property now again what happened in the year 1850 a new law was passed to make conversion to christianity easier but this law allowed an indian who was who had converted to christianity to inherit the property of his ancestors then many indians what they begin to feel here when they feel, they begin to feel that the british were destroying their religion right if indians if hindus will be converting themselves to christianity it means they was looking at this they were in the feeling that that the uh, britishers they were destroying their religion their social customs and their traditional way of life this is what many indians they started thinking about this they were worried how our religion will be taken into consideration and how the social customs and the traditional way of life will be up, uh, will be continued but then many indians they feel they are going to lose that Brit britishers are going to destroy all this but actually on the contrary other indians they supported the changes to be brought in the existing social practices this we are going to learn in the next lecture so children today in, let's have the quick recap of what we have done in the today's topic in the today's session we have started with the main topic that is the policies and the people we saw here not only the kings queens even the landlords sepoys soldiers everybody was affected with the policies that was given by the east india company correct then we saw the topic nawabs lose their power how the nawabs they lost their power then too we saw the ruling companies many ruling families they tried to negotiate with them here i gave you the example of rani lakshmi bai of jhansi she wanted the company to recognize she pleaded for that to recognize her adopted son as a heir to the kingdom after the death of her husband similarly with the nana saheb who was the adopted son of peshwa bhaji rao second pleaded the same his father's pension should be given to him after his father's death but the company did not consider did not consider their pleas right they were the request to a turn down they were not accepted by the company then we saw the avadh was also one of the last territories to be annexed by them right and then we saw in the year 1849 the coins minted with the photo of bahadur shah zafar was also the, the photo was removed from that coin right this is what how they wanted the mogul dynasty to 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 bring to an end right then we saw in the year 1856 governor general canning decided that bahadur shah zafar would be the last king and after his death none of his descendants would be recognized as kings whereas they would just be called as princes then after that we saw how the peasants and the sepoys they were affected because of this in the villages we saw the peasants they resented the high taxes and also they were 
also the rigid methods of the revenue collection they those who fail to pay back their loans to the money lenders what happened with them they gradually lost their lands which they had tilled for the future generations then we saw about the sepoys also they were unhappy about their pay allowances and the conditions of service and even the new new rules that were given by the company's army they believed that the religious sensibility they were violating the religious sensibility and beliefs of their indian sepoys right i gave you the example we discussed about like how hindus believe that if they cross sea they would lose their religion and caste but the sepoys were told to go to burma by sea route to fight for the company but they refused and for that they were severely punished and again the new law was passed in the year 1856 what was the new law those who joined the company's army had to agree to the serve overseas if required right this is what we have learned then the finally we saw the next topic responses to reforms in that we saw the british decided to reform the indian society laws were passed to stop the practice of sati even they encouraged the remarriage of widows and english language was promoted there actively promoted there then in the after 1830 we saw the company allowed christian missionaries to function freely in its in its domain and even own land and property then in the 1850 a new law was passed to make conversion of people to christianity easily and this law allowed indians to convert to christianity to inherit the property that was of their ancestors so many indians felt that the british they were destroying their religion their social customs and their traditional way of life this is what we have learned in the today's session we'll be continuing with the next topic in the next session till then children take care